stage for Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Russian forces continue to pound civilian apartments and residences in Ukraine as the first diplomatic talks from Russia's five-day-old invasion failed to produce a ceasefire. Guy Taylor, Tom Howe, Ben Wolfgang, and Bill Gertz continue to track what's going on in the war. Russians are feeling the first real blowback from the invasion, even as Ukrainian forces continue to surprise with the strength of their resistance and their ability to keep Kyiv and other major cities out of Russia's grasp for now. The value of the Russian ruble has plummeted on world currency exchanges as the U.S. froze Russian central bank assets. Desperate Russians lined up to pull cash from ATMs, and even notoriously neutral Switzerland broke from tradition to begin freezing Russian assets. The world continues to harden in opposition to Russian President Vladimir Putin and his unprovoked aggression. The international governing bodies for soccer, figure skating, and hockey have all suspended Russian participation, Russian planes have been banned from flying in European airspace, and state liquor boards across the United States have removed Russian-produced products from their shelves. The narrative of a feisty Ukraine holding off a blundering Russian army has taken hold globally, and specialists say the Kremlin's failure to sell its spin on events is beginning to have a tangible impact on the war on the ground. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. If you don't have access to the Times yet, you can visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George for a special subscription offer. Experts say tens of thousands of Afghans who should have been evacuated during an airlift last year were instead stranded. Stephen Dynan reports many directly assisted the U.S. government and were promised a ticket out of the country under the Special Immigrant Visa Program. Many are now unable to find jobs as they wait to hear from the State Department about their chances for rescue. Private groups have stepped in to provide food, clothes, rent money, or a place to stay. The goal is to keep those Afghans alive long enough for the State Department to figure out a more permanent solution. The State Department says it doesn't have a firm estimate on how many Afghans who qualify for the special visa are still in the country, nor how many have made it across the border from Afghanistan and are navigating the process from elsewhere. Democratic-leaning states are moving to pass abortion laws ahead of the Supreme Court's ruling in a case challenging Roe v. Wade. Alex Sawyer reports that Vermont and New Jersey are among more than a dozen states and the District of Columbia where policymakers are pursuing protections for abortion rights as the court's ruling nears. On the other side of the issue, about 20 states have stricter laws poised to take effect should Roe no longer bind them. And finally, the long-stalled drive for a new stadium for the Washington Commanders is suddenly heating up as officials from Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. take steps to jumpstart the project. Sports reporter Matt Paris reports in Virginia, legislators passed two bills to establish a local stadium authority, a crucial step in luring the commanders to the Commonwealth. Documents connected to the Virginia proposal show plans for a stadium site in Sterling, Woodbridge, or Dumfries. Maryland, however, isn't ready to give up the franchise without a fight. State lawmakers are reportedly working on an incentives package to keep the team where it currently plays in Landover. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser has also restated her desire for the commanders to move back to the city after leaving RFK Stadium in 1997. The team's lease at FedEx Field expires after 2027. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us on any major podcast platform. Just search Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George. Gould.